Hey guys, we are finally live. You know, only almost 10 minutes late. No, <laughs> not almost, almost 10. It's eight minutes, okay? Eight minutes, and it's 100% okay, nine cats. minutes. 100% cat's fault this evening. She said everything was ready. <laughs> we just walked up here to get rolling, and... So, true story, we're having dinner, and I said, it's 7.15. I think that uh, we need to head over to make sure everything's set up. Oh, everything's set up. All we need to do is plug in the computer. I'm like, okay. I was overconfident in what Charles did this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the blame game is... R- Running rampant over here. Well, um, if it rolls downhill, it just ended here, so. I was going to say, you could have thrown Annie <laughs> under the bus and said it was her fault nope, about the cable. Nope, it ended here. It's done. <laughs> but anyway, guys, definitely we can throw this, uh, chalk it up to technical difficulties. And if you are following along with uh, our live streams in the past, you will know that we're playing Bird Dog Bingo, which if you're not sure what that is, Bird Dog Chat Bingo is... Um, a fun little bingo game that we like to play in the evenings. And there are a lot of cards that have technical difficulties listed there. Um, But you can get your bird dog chat bingo card from patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. And then for as little as $5, you can play bird dog chat bingo with us. And tonight, we are going to be giving away an Onyx maps subscription so that um, once Ethan gives his grand talk, Uh, And I sit there and learn something, too, about how to utilize Onyx Maps for early season hunting spots um, and hunting spots all year round. You can definitely um, take part by reaping the benefits of a bird dog chat bingo winning Onyx Maps subscription. So we're giving that away tonight. Um, But Patreon, Patreon is a platform that we help people answer questions, give them advice on dog training. And like I said, for as little as $5, you can play Bird Dog Chat Bingo. And then the higher tiers give you the support of what we can offer, which is our expertise, our advice, and even to the extent of watching live training sessions to give you our feedback on those training sessions. Um, Our most powerful tool is the ability that we have to read dogs and to give you that feedback. So um, patrons are our biggest supporter, and we thank you guys. If you are a patron already, thank you so much. If you're not, join now. Play Bird Dog Chat Bingo um, and reap the benefits that you could get from Patron. Okay, I need to go back to the thing. What do you need to see? Comments. Right here. Oh, this is what I'm okay. saying. Well, I'm give me your phone then. More technical difficulties, but we're working through it. technical difficulties. Anyway, if you are new, you may not know about the Bird Dog Chat Bingo, which we just talked about, but also the format of our live streams is we typically talk about the bingo card so that you can play from the very get-go because I've probably rolled my eyes at Ethan at least 10 times now. Uh, But also, (laughs) thank you. Thank you very much, honey. Uh, But also we like to go over a few quick announcements, do some fun check-ins, check in where all you guys are watching us from. People have already been throwing those in the comments and oh, that little clicky thing, my cable. Yeah, it's called the cable. Don't hit it with your hand. And it should I like not to talk clicky, with my clicky. hand. Well, just don't hit the cable with well, your Well, then hand. I can't talk with my mouth because the microphone's too far away. Nah, you good. get your hands or you get your mouth. Anyway. <laughs> I know my decision. <laughs> of course you do. And then we go into our topic of discussion for the evening, which Ethan's going to be talking about Onyx. Like I said, he's doing his recon work right now. That's why he's so focused and concentrated. Oh, he doesn't want a hot spot anywhere. I get it. I get it. Secrecy. And then we will open it up to questions. So if you have a question that's burning a hole in your pocket, we will be getting those uh, at the end of this session. Uh, If you have one that you just can't wait to ask, throw a super chat on it and we will get that first. We prioritize those. So let me roll through some check-ins. Ethan gave me his phone because the computer is currently being reconned. Um, and then this way I don't have to squint. It's it's actually kind of nice. Hey, Brad, thanks for checking in. Turbo is doing great. We're excited to be able to potentially run him through his NA test for you. Hey, Aaron, it was so nice meeting you at Game Fair this last uh, month. I'm so glad that we actually finally got to put a name with a face. So hi from Minnesota. We've got checking in from Stevens, Pennsylvania, Delano, Minnesota, Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Hugon, Hugo, Hugo, Oregon, already mispronounced someplace. It's uh, bound to happen. Why not get it out of the way on a super easy one? 
Andrew Cooper. We've got checking in from South Carolina. Angleton. We've discussed this in the past. It's definitely Angleton, Texas. Thanks, Gene. We've got uh, Brian's Road, Maryland. We've got Mission, Kansas. Hey, Ian, thanks for checking in. Mark, thanks for checking in from New York. Hopefully, Sarah's doing great for you still. Uh, we've got the Adirondacks, Angelo. Congrats, huge congrats to Frida and you on your prize one utility test with Frida. She did awesome. I'm so proud of her. Uh, she passed up her mama and her daddy so far. Uh, they got big shoes to fill, I guess. We'll, we'll get there this spring, right, Charles? Absolutely. We've got, um, we are not talking about geology, geography, or geometry tonight, Gene. Here, hand me this. And use I that. need that. Oh, no, I get this that. now. Yeah. Okay, got to go figure out where I was at now. Right there. Oh, good I job. Brought you there. Oh, good job, good job, good job. We've got, uh, hey, Melanie and Don from Otsego, Minnesota. Good stop checking into you, running into you at Game Fair as well. And we really appreciate the offer of your cabin next year. So we will be in touch about that. Hopefully we can make it work. Annie Hutchins in Kansas tonight. I know. Wah, wah, wah. Not Pretty Prairie. Could be better, but um, I don't really know if I could say could be worse uh, after that picture of Yahtzee, but good luck with that. We've got um, Johnstown, Colorado, Sturgis, South Dakota, Eastern Iowa checking in. Hello from Missouri. Alberta. We've got our first international check-in from Kaylin Kelly. And it might not be our first because I'm kind of going backwards now. Justin Webster. Hey, from Atlanta. We've got uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Very cool. Where else? I think I caught up. I'm going, nope, Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, now I'm caught up. Now I got to go back because Ethan's wasn't actually where he thought he was. Southern California. Hey, Elijah. Hope everything's going good. <laughs> it definitely ends with Charles because she had all everything in a pile for you. Tori and Dustin checking in. Hey, how are you guys this evening? Dawsonville, Georgia, South Maryland, baby, whoop, whoop, Massachusetts, Alabama, Michigan in the house, Dublin, New Hampshire, Omaha. Hey, Tony. Hey, Peter. How are you guys' pups doing? Tony, you're getting close to uh, running through your natural ability test in October here, I think. Good luck. Western Colorado. Hey, Tina. We'll be seeing you soon for a new pup, pup. And Rio Rancho, New Mexico, Lake City, Michigan, and Arizona, Randolph, Maine. Whoop, whoop. Got all of our check-ins rolling. So I kind of hinted at um, Quest's test. She just ran again. We just ran again, I guess. And we prized this time, guys, 189 prize two, kind of a bobble in her duck drag retrieve. Uh, so we ended up getting a two in that category instead of a three or a four, which dropped us down to a prize two instead of a one. Uh, everything else was a-okay and would have got us into a prize one category. So a little bit of work putting all the pieces together and we will maybe get it next spring. So we're going to try. Any other big announcements that you've got, Ethan, um, on, on your mind? No, he's dis uh, he's distracted. It's okay. No, he's still just, reconning. I got this. Go. I got this, guys. Cat will take care of you. So, Quest got her utility prize too. Super proud of her. We are running a ton of dogs, Charles, in the Missouri Uplands test. The end of September. I've got Glitch on the docket, Hex on the docket. Charles is running Mud Mud, right? Yep, Muddy, muddy. And Utility. Muddy and Utility, and then Jess is running her puppy that she's raising for the El Tesoro program, Cass, as well as a couple client dogs. Um, hopefully Turbo's on that list, as well as Rozzy, and then, um, which is a puppy out of our program as well. And then Tessa is going to be running her first NA puppy, uh, Journey, which she's also raising and developing for the El Tesoro program. So it's going to be a great weekend, lots of new things, lots of excitement, um, and hopefully really good outcomes. Could be a fun, uh, a fun Monday, that's for sure. Well, I won't be here, I guess, because then I got to go from there to run AKC. Yeah, it's gonna be busy. I'm gonna have to take all the puppies. With Basically, me. from this point forward, 
Testing, 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 hunting, testing, 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 hunting. For six months. Yes. For me. For Charles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're we're not quite to the level of Charles because we're not going to Alta Sword to guide for four months straight, but it's going to be close. There'll be some trips back and forth to El Tesoro and South Dakota for grouse and other fun places. I think we might make it out to, did you say North Carolina, South Carolina? One of the Carolinas for some quail hunting? South Carolina. South Carolina. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to call it the Carolinas from now on, and then I can't be wrong. It's pretty close. God dang. What? That I can't keep them straight? No, super chat. As always, thank you guys so much. It was very nice to meet you too. Game Bearer. Awesome job with the seminar cat. You guys rock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here's my super chat question to Mitchell Skater. Oh, uh, we'll have to roll back and find Mitchell here. Find uh, it real quick, and then we'll roll into stuff. Where is Always give precedence to the super chats to come through. I we don't appreciate know. it. Mitchell. Nope. That's Michelle. It was real close. Oh, there it is. Hel- oh, no, that was hello. hello. Question for a first-year hunter and GSP owner. What range should I let my dog hunt at within so many yards, and at what pace should I be going? It's a great question. Go for it, Kat. Well, it depends. Uh, did it say what kind of dog should I let my one-year-old? Did it say breed? You, um, you bopped off the thing. I can't see it now. GSP. Okay, so the reason that I ask about breed is uh, definitely because – a versatile dog, a pointing breed dog, has a more passive response to their birds. They're going to point them or hopefully going to point them. So it does give you a little bit of extended range so that you've got more time to approach for the flush of the bird, whereas a more flushing breed dog isn't going to give you the time to get close enough or in gun range if they're out too far when they get birdie and they flush up a bird. So um, that does make a difference. And so if you've got a flushing breed dog, The answer would be keep them in gun range so that when they get birdie and they start flushing, you can take advantage of that. If they are a versatile dog and they're going to be pointing for you, it really depends on your personal preference, the cover that you're hunting, and um, their level of steadiness at that point. You know, if they're pretty green, not a ton of steadiness, still learning the ropes, you might want to make sure that you're still within close to gun range because they're probably not going to hold point super long, or if the birds are super wild and wily, they may be flushing even just from the pressure of them on point. Um, So you want to be there to take advantage of that. Uh, If you've got a little more steady dog that has a better understanding, a little more experience under the belt, you can probably range a little bit bigger than that. Uh, And again, like I said, depends on the cover. If you're in tight quarters, grouse woods, things like that, keeping them closer so you can see where they're at, follow them. If you're in big rolling country, the more ground they cover, the less you have to. So that's always a benefit. Um, And you can see them usually from a pretty good distance. So you are able to see when they go on point and have time to get to them. So hopefully that helps answer your question. It's kind of um, not a completely straightforward black and white answer. So it depends. Yeah, I was trying to give more information than just it depends. But yeah, basically, it just depends. It does. Will you will you roll our aperture off a little bit again? Are we blurry? No, if What's we're on. What's aperture mean? It's at two eight. I want to go. Okay, we'll go go like four. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It just means if your nose is like a half inch further than mine, we come in and out of focus because mm-hmm. of that, the f Who stop focusing. aperture. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you yeah. should have said f stop. I didn't know f stop and aperture were the same thing. Synonyms. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because there's shutter speed and there's ISO and there's all these other things. Dang, baby. I can, throw, I can throw words out there. So. Ooh. Tonight. And, folks, that's a wrap. <laughs> no. Um, on this, though, you have something really special you want to go to. Yes. And then what we're going to do, so I want you all to start thinking about this, okay? Uh, first and foremost, before we forget, I want to thank patrons. I did uh, that already. You did? Totally was zoned in. Hey. But we want to thank you again because I want to you thank guys you are again because y'all are awesome. Largest supporter of everything, Standing Stone Online. So, um, you got that to roll into. But before we get into that, start thinking about this because what we're going to do this evening is show the power of Onyx Maps and we're going to plan hunts in different areas based on seasons. Okay. I'm going to show you the tools that I specifically use and I'm going to test my lack of ability to use the version on the computer. I primarily use 
it on my phone, but it won't look quite as good. And we may go back and forth a little bit to show just the difference between the two. Um, the desktop's definitely more powerful, more powerful when we're looking for areas, and I'll show you some of those features. But where do you want to go hunt what? Throw it in the comments as we go through this next piece, and that'll give us a starting point because we're gonna we're gonna work on this together. I'm not trying to hotspot anybody. I know it's a big deal people complain about, and I'm gonna poke at you a little bit because guess what? If we're hot spotting something that's public freaking ground, so anybody can go hunt it, um, what I'm showing you is how to use the available tools to find the specific covers and be more successful because ultimately if I have to give up one of my spots so that somebody can get into the game itself, I personally am happy to do that. Um, so Anyhow. Exactly. There is not a lot of resources out there, and we're trying to be one of those because we have always recognized the need for knowledge and the need Ooh, to share that knowledge from our YouTube channel to teaching you how to train your dog from home um, to it's how it. to hunt and find hunting spots. And there's not a lot of resources out there. So sharing that knowledge so people that are getting into the sport can be successful is really important. Now, all y'all that know how to find hunting spots and have done it for, you know, umpteen hundred years. Share as well. Share as well. But and at the same don't time, steal hotspots. Gene, Gene Morris, pheasants in Texas. I know that they're there and I know they exist, but it's not like... I didn't say, let's go find the needle in the haystack, okay? <laughs> let's go find some birds. Uh, no. Anyhow, I, I'll do my best. I'm not a grouse and woodcock expert. I start to see that coming through. But I will. I can show you some things that will help the, the folks. And then hopefully some other folks will chime in on this. This is a, a community. What are we doing here? This is upland bird hunt, not turkey. What's We're also not looking you? for elk, bear, what is, or... What is wrong with you? <laughs> no. All right, folks. We've got something really cool to show you. So, Let's Charles, can here, you Kat. flip to my dongle? Here comes the dongle. Thanks. <laughs> so, this is really cool. Cole Johnston, which he is actually using the picture as his profile picture. Well, he because it's rocking and rolling. I know. He reached out to us a while ago um, requesting if he would be able to utilize one of our pictures of Hazel, the huntress, to do a pencil sketch. And I said, absolutely, I would love to see what that looks like. And these are some of the posts that he has made of his progress, which is incredible to see the you know detail that he puts into this, the time that he takes to go through this process, you know, even as far as like showing live action, well, I guess this would be sped up action, of the process of time lapse. all time lapse. There we go. Words. Uh, this process and all of the detail that goes into these pencil drawings. It's incredible. It's amazing. Uh, and he has actually sent us the original pencil the, sketch. The original? That we have not opened yet. Yeah. So, I thought it was a print. Nah. -uh. We got. I'm. I'm almost 99.99999% this is the original because he also told me how it is, um, uh, he, how he signed it so that he didn't mess up any of the picture. So if you can undongle us, do I have to just unplug it? Oh, no. Okay. I don't know. We haven't opened this, guys, yet. We prepped it so that it would hopefully be less cumbersome to open, or Charles prepped it. How did you do that? The ah, top. No. Nope. Hill had it, right? Yep. It seems still taped. Yeah, Looks like know. we're gonna have about tw we're in about twenty minutes of just making fun of people asking me silly questions. Let's find the last sharp tail grouse in South Carolina. What? Oh, got it. I'm just joking. <laughs> dun dun dun. Some people are crazy and do crazy things, and we appreciate y'all. I'm, like, kind of nervous on how to open this, actually. Don't want to mess it up. I understand. Keep talking while I de -rapify. Let's go through and start gathering some data. I also didn't know how data. sealed up this would be, and yeah, I wanted to open this. it. This will so. be easier. All righty. Start a poll. Things I know something about. What bird...
Charles, you should have peeked a little harder. You, I was very given chicken. very specific <laughs> instructions. So that we knew how much preparation hey. on peeling this would be. I'm so as long as we're throwing blame around. I'm so thankful it was packaged in with care and love. There you go. There's a poll, people. Start rocking on that bad boy. And the race is off. 36% say pheasant, 44%, 35%. What is going on here? I'm still going to veto whatever your answer is. I'm going to show you what I know, okay? <laughs> oh, yep. Like I said, he didn't. Can you see that? I can't see yeah. what we're seeing. I can oh, see Ethan it. Ethan doesn't have it on the thing. You're, You're good. good. You can see it. Whoopsies. So, Cole didn't want to sign it on the front, he said, and mess up any of the drawings. So, sign it on the back. Sweet. Leave it in the plastic, eh? Yeah, we're gonna leave it in the plastic. I'm a little too nervous because I want to get this framed. I want to get this framed, and I don't want to screw anything up. So that is amazing. So good. It looks exactly like her. This is actually a picture that DT System also used for a giant backdrop banner for their seminars and like expo spots that they use. Not to mention one of my favorite dogs, if not mm, one of my favorite dogs. Just saying right now. And this Beautiful, is the one that, that Cat wouldn't it. let me have. That There's a long story that someday, if you get the opportunity to come hunt with me, I'll tell you. And if you want to hear a similar story, then uh, when you hear, if we hear Rick and Brenda's podcast, uh, two of their Hall of Fame dogs came back the exact same way. Are you serious? Dead serious. That's, That's so crazy. crazy. So so I just, hold on. I just put my headphones on backwards. Yeah, their first two were the same story. That's so crazy. That's one, thing, that's one thing that is really crazy is people always ask us, how do you pick a puppy? How do you know that you're picking the, the best, the right puppy out of a litter? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's amazing. We will cherish it forever. I'm going to go get it framed specially. We love getting gifts Hobby like lobby. this, and that's where I typically go to. Unless somebody can job. throw out a like better option, I usually do all my framing at Hobby Lobby. Um, but it's good. They have I don't know here. Yeah, basically, because they can do custom sizes, all the things. But when you pick a puppy from a litter, there is a lot of development that still happens after eight weeks old. And so unless you keep the entire litter, not every puppy from a litter should be bred. Br cats, brutally honest comments right now. Um, and sometimes we as breeders may pick the wrong one. And then they end up not being part of the breeding program and get moved on as amazing trained dogs in the future, but they're not part of a breeding program. And someone else from the puppy litter list gets the dog from that litter that should be part of a breeding program. Um, and then even more rarely, something happens where that dog comes back to you for one reason or another, and you have the rare opportunity to reevaluate that dog for your breeding program, thus Hazel. Mm -hmm. so. Cool, cool, cool dog. Very cool. So do you have all your reconning done? I think we're pretty close. That got really weird when I added that Q&A section thing, and people started answering questions, but I couldn't see any of it. So no sound. What do you mean no sound? Turn up your volume, Richard. I might not have been able to be heard as well when I was talking because I didn't have my headphones on and I was farther away from the mic when I was standing up oh, to good. show off the picture. So good. You can't you can't buy a bag. I'm saying it right now, Angelo. <laughs> Throw this us is out a, a number. This for is the Frida. com this is the <laughs> conversation that was had. Okay. <laughs> this is the conversation that was had. Which puppy should we pick from this litter? I'm like, I think this one. Happened to Ben Freda. I think this one would be the one that we should keep. And Kat's like, no, I want this one. But and that's I also kind a of cool also one. promised her to Angelo already because we talked about like his goals and from a standpoint of 
potential show titling. And at that point, blacks so, were Angelo, not approved. So, you have, you have for, Kat to thank. Yeah. Blacks were not approved in the show ring. So, I was like, well, this is the liver one that I need to get to Angelo because all the things will take a black one. And don't get me wrong, Legacy is a really nice dog, but Frida is putting her to shame, man. Don't worry. It'll be a breeder award, utility breeder award later soon enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will. we have two here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's going to be and exciting stuff. Doc is a rocking and a rolling his duck searches. Yeah. All righty. Okay, so let's go ahead and bop over to this. Some of the things that we wanted to push into, uh, you're on me now. Let's see here. Just to make sure. And if the upper right corner doesn't work for you, then I can move you. But it looks like it'll be good for your... Uh, uh, no, it should be fine. So we got a lot of different things in a lot of different states. And I, I'm i not an expert of all things, but I do want to show... We're in Onyx Maps here. Um, if you are in, you can see all that's rolling. It looks like it's live there. You've got questions if they come in, hon. Probably okay. need to plug my phone in, though. It's getting lower battery life, though. Your phone's not important. You were doing this. My phones. Come on. Okay. No, no, no. So charge two phones at once. We're in here. No, yeah, absolutely. So we're in here. Um, you've got a couple different things within your individual content. You've got pieces that you can add and remove, and that's what I ended up doing because I don't want to specifically hotspot things or cause issues. I want to show you how to utilize this for yourself. Um, to move forward with things. So what we end up looking at as we go through these pieces would be your layers. That was up here at the top. So if you're on your computer, you're in the layers category. If you get an elite membership, which if you win one tonight from Bird Dog Bingo. Uh, speaking of, I'm going to pull this up. You're still on me, which is fine. Okay. I'm just pulling up to look at the bingo cards. Mm, which ones are? Uh, who's that? No one. <laughs> They're sorted. Did you just delete them all? No. Okay. These There's are like two already. No, they're not real. Are they real? I nobody said anything in chat, but if anybody said no, those are old ones. I didn't delete them. Before he didn't today. delete There's the old ones. There's one more thing that I didn't get to. <sighs> So these are all old ones. So so how do we know what the new ones are? I sorted them by date. So they've got to be online. There's a little green dot by the people that are actively online doing things. And currently it shows one person is online. Is that me? Yep. Hey, go get your bingo card. If you want to win an Onyx Map subscription tonight, Can that get you some. As a, uh, never mind. I'm not going to say it. There's I just want to get another online. square on mine and I don't want to prompt it. Mm-hmm. So... You're in there. You're doing your thing. When you see the um, when the bingo stuff happens, you'll be there. Now, we had a couple different requests. I want to start with what's coming up first. There was pheasants. There was quail. There was whatever. I mean, really, let's talk. What is the first thing we can hunt? And there's grouse. Now, first and foremost, I am not a wood grouse expert. I know a little bit about mountain grouse, but I know it in a very select space. And I can show you some of these differences and some of the features within the service itself. But let's go ahead, add some Montana requests. And let's face it, everybody that wants to hunt sharp tail, the dream is let's go to Montana. I mean, I had never been to Montana uh, almost four years ago now. And I, same thing, I wanted for years ago. Let's go hunt grouse. I want to go to Montana. I want to see that. So let's go into Montana. If you get into the zone here, in, let's go, first and foremost, we would need to turn on our layers in Montana. So I went to, up here at the top, hunt map layers. Sorry if this is too basic for fun, some of you that know. You want to turn these things on. Montana Upland Game Mon- Management Projects, Block Management, Government Lands, and then also Private Land Details. Because there are opportunities to hunt private ground specifically in bigger open area states, those people are sometimes more open to the opportunity of calling, tracking down some data. 
you have a buddy like Adam, you can say, hey, we need to talk to somebody. And then next thing you know, he's worked through three different Facebook groups and found the grandson of this lady that now controls the property. And we call and talk to him. Okay. That's how we've gotten onto some pieces. It's not some magic that I've got answered open doors in every direction. But to hit on that, when you are contacting somebody about hunting on their private land, it's really important to go about it the right way. That's you it. Know, introduce yourself, explain what you'll be doing, when you would be on the property, when you would be leaving the property. Um, just doing those type of um, good citizenship type of things. And then when you're there, taking care of the property. If there's a gate that's closed, you close it behind you. If you are shooting shotgun shells, you pick them up behind you. You know, take care of the land that these people are allowing you the privilege to to hunt on 100 percent. bingo you got a somebody got a bingo that's what they said charles got a bingo or no. you're representing no i'm responding to chat. aaron aha whoop whoop Woo. all right let's take a look at there what is that yeah number? definitely robert try to meet them in person if possible that's it absolutely Do a you, handshake, go, you go you knock know. on doors what, what are we at here you're on me still, right? 77F90F. Yeah. So you guys can see how I go and track this now. 77F90F. Let's see here. Online. Is that the 77F90F. Do you see that in here? You can search it. But scroll down. There it is. 77F90F. Questy Pop, Navda, Ethan squinting whilst reading. That's just a given. If you get that on your card, just check it. It's going to happen. Oh, my gosh. Like, literally, That's you don't it. have anything else checked. Cat got defini- straight through. Cat definitely rolled her eyes at Ethan, though. Yeah, and you we better did check talk- that one real quick. Yeah. We talked <laughs> but, about Thunder. You got you, more in there, but you did. But you got- we talked about turkey hunting because I was like, don't mention. What is this? Turkey, turkey hunting. hunting? We're looking for upland All right, birds. bingo. Rock and roll. You wow. get yourself an Onyx Map subscription. You know how to get a hold of me. Do that so I don't forget. Goodbye, bingo players. There was only one winner tonight. <laughs> but stick around for the rest of the conversation because it'll be good. Okay, so a couple of things. We're going to go 2D. We're going to hunt grouse, and we're going to do it in Montana. Now, there are a lot of different areas to hunt within the state, okay? So first and foremost, you need to do a little bit of recon. But if you just say, let's go smack dab, we're going to draw an X, and we're going to find, because it's on X, and we're going to find that north of Billings, south of the Montana words here, is pretty much that X zone. I've never even been to this part of the state, okay? What we're going to end up doing is rolling down in here, and I have all of those layers that I showed you right here turned on. Now we're going to get rid of this layer category. We're in Montana. We're going to start to zoom into these different things. First and foremost, I want to go, I know the general area that I want to hit. Now, what do these different colors mean? Once you get in on them, they're going to find. It's going to say type 1... This here, if you click on it, says type 2. What does that mean? When you click on them and you come into these different zones, so I just clicked on this red dotted piece here. It shows that the owner is here. It is in the block management area category. It is a BMA type A, uh, type 1, excuse me. You've got the to visit the website. We're going to open that in a new tab. This is information about block management and how to go about it. If you come in here, gaining access, it pulls in all of the information that you need right here. Type 1, BMA, areas where hunters administer their own permission. What that means is you write your information down on a card and you go hunt. And you put it in a little card box, basically. It's pretty straightforward. They kind of just want to know who's there. Okay, so we found this big piece. Look at this. Right here. It comes all the way out here. Now what we need to do that we have that highlight is we need to come in here and we see, do we have road access? All right, so we have road access right here. This says, what is that road? I don't know. Spin at it a little harder. A little harder. Alec Roy Road. Now, Disclaimer, folks, I have no idea if there's grouse here, okay? But I'm going to show you some of the things that we can do. This is a piece. Another one, excuse me, I'm kind of into the thing here. 
Another one we want to go in and turn on, which I believe it's turned on already. And if it's not, I want to show you how to do such. Come in down here to uh, land and access and then turn in. Um, these wilderness areas are important if we're hunting a different species. Then we want to go into trees, crops, and cover. And then we need to turn on U.S. crop distribution. This is really important depending on the time of year in which you are hunting specific <laughs> species. And what this gives you is the previous year's reports, okay? So we hover over this, very plain and simple. It says hay. What does hay mean? It could mean, uh, it most likely means grass that they cut. I mean, there's alfalfa. That's also a type of hay, but it's alfalfa. Alfalfa is a better food source on average, I would say, if you can find alfalfa, it's a good, it's a good idea. There's there's lots of factors that come in depending on species. We're talking sharp tail right now. Um, so you got alfalfa, you come in here, there's grain. Uh, we've got winter wheat. Winter wheat's not a bad thing for us, but it's not overly beneficial when it comes to sharp tail, depending on exactly my experience with finding them. But we have winter wheat here, we have hay, that's good, we have alfalfa, and we have some grain. What that shows us is last year. So now you can actually call in if we find this individual piece. Um, let me get out of here. If you go into different zones, let's see here. Like that says sorghum. So this grain is probably a feed type grain, which... Ultimately, what it means is that there's a different source of food there. All of these things are good, all right? Now, when we hunt grouse, uh, it was explained to me one time as grouse-like views. Uh, ultimately, you need elevation change in order to truly be in their zone, okay? We're not talking about mountainous regions, but we do need elevation change. What you got? Point West Creatives, Dustin and Tori said, read the details of each BMA, not all allow upland hunting. So, it's good to know. very important, yes. Good to mention. Oh, hello. So, but that's it. It's it. The BMA portion gives you the information for each, which is visit the area info, visit more information, visit the website for BMA number, um, crop data, grains. This says barley, rye, oats, other small grains. So, Exactly, like a feed field is what we would categorize that as. So all of the information comes right here in on X Maps that you have access to. Now, when you come down in here to the satellite version, this is a couple things that are really important. Um, you can go a hybrid or you can go the full topo. I usually prefer the hybrid portion because what I just talked about, we need to be able to see elevation changes. So as we come into this zone here, you can see we have some elevation changes in these. Oh, look at that. And Another piece. Water. We have the potential of water. Yes. A, a blue, waterway. A blue line waterway here. We have elevations. We have grains. We have alfalfa. alfalfa. We oh, have winter wheat. Well, this is grain. The alfalfa there was is alfalfa somewhere. right here. Uh, it's winter wheat as well. Where was our alfalfa? At? It was close. Back up, back up, back up. Over right there. Here. Right there. Yep. So, um, and then BLM is a different category, so you need to do research on that. But even more importantly here, we have a pond. Folks, we kind of struck it rich in this little zoom in on the map here. We have all of the factors. That doesn't mean that we necessarily Food, have water, birds. water, elevation, Look cover. at this stuff down here. Okay, this is cool. This is a place that looks like... A little mm, sharp tail knoll. It could be a little sharp tail knoll, but that looks like that might be sage, so... You may potentially run into that category. And this means that they did some type of, this can be mixed data. Sometimes it says grain, it says winter wheat, it says hay. If you look at our property, which I can pull that up after I'm going to use a map tool to drop a pin so we can come back here. I want to show you this. I'm going to drop our location. Oh, come on now. I have that stuff blocked because I don't like everybody to the, the world to know what I'm doing here, but location services. You're going to come in to the old Standing Stone headquarters, Cheney Lake. Keep zooming in here. Arlington. 
We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Where are we at? K14, 17. There it is. Charlington, you come across here. You come this way. Cole's in the chat. <clears throat> Who's in the chat? Cole. Hey, Cole. He's oh, the guy that absolutely. Pa- painted. I keep saying painted. Drew, Drew. Hazel. Thank That's you awesome. so much for drawing her. If you guys, if anybody else has an amazing dog that they're like, I want to commemorate this dog and have them live on forever in an amazing pencil drawing, you should reach out to him and I'm sure that he can work out the details with you. But I shared your profile, Cole Johnston, um, Bird and Field, I think, on Instagram. I got to go back to my Instagram. Um, what is all those handle things? Dog and field, sorry. Dog and field on Instagram, so you can find him there. All right, so here's an example. Yes, absolutely, thank you. This is the old Standing Stone headquarters. You can see here we have a couple little waterways. This one is dry. This one over here builds our uh, is home to our new duck search pond. I'm kind of excited for when they update this map because it's like this big. Um, but it looks a lot different now. You can see the crop data here on this. No, that's your I that's your Montana you one. Okay, so winter wheat and sorghum and more winter wheat and sorghum and soybeans. There were no soybeans planted up here. Okay, so the information can be a little hit and mix, but I can tell you this area had crops and that included some of these different things in this zone. And that was a previous year, last year, Typically, and there's a rotation. So if you call the county, I would say that the average farmer is better at reporting than I am. But um, if you call the county, you can find out basically what a standard rotation would be for, you know, if it says corn, did they rotate to beans or did they rotate to milo? What is typical in the air? Or milo versus winter wheat. Like that's a, more of a South Dakota thing. They do milo winter weed and then sometimes into corn like i mean but it's a typical rotation that you can kind of guesstimate on what will be there so back to our one point on here i just want to show you what some differences can look like bryce hultgren also mentioned also if the state you're looking at has private lands in a walk-in access program example colorado or kansas there will be a layer for those properties as well yes there is yes there is Onyx has pretty much thought of everything, guys. And once you figure out the program and the layers and how to navigate it and utilize it, you can really scout some really great opportunities um, and and utilize it. There was nothing like this before Onyx. I mean, you could get plots maps. You could get um, (laughs) drive around looking with your own eyes and... It was a lot harder to plan trips and plan them intelligently for for a hunting trip based on, you know, what your targeted species were. Correct. Right here, we're in private land category where I actually dropped my pen, okay? We're in private land it's, um, by the Trinell Properties LP. It's got an address in Billings. You can reach out. You can do a white pages search, try and find these people. It's got an address there, but, I mean, that's a tax address, so it doesn't necessarily mean the people that are there. But gives you a little bit of direction. So the things that we have here around this stuff give us some hope, okay? We don't know necessarily if this would be a place that a 100% go hunt, but we do have pieces, and this is the thing. that we could go, this is something that's interesting, Is there a piece around here specifically that we can hunt? And then I would mark something like this. So we've got a type one here. When we click on that, let's go to their website. I just show show the details on this specific one. Not the direction I wanted to go. Crop layers. That's different. So... Um, so all the information this specific one has, but it's 6,000 acres too. That's crazy. Um, 
more ground than what a typical just person start can walking. hunt. Yeah, just start walking. That's exactly what not to do. You need all of these pieces, okay? So as we sort through this, I would go... I mean, it doesn't look bad from a map because of the fact that early season things, we need... Earlier season, the, the birds are on bugs, and bugs are attracted to things like alfalfa, or they will be in uh, short grass prairie or hay fields. And if there's good bug production, you're going to be seeing lots of grasshoppers as you still walk through the field. Now, they'll also be in that grass category. They're going to be looking for things, uh, different berries of different sorts. Um, snowberries would be one. Um, it's a little red berry and I am drawing a, con a blank on what they're exactly called. What are those little red berries called? You know, Charlie? The snowberry? Not snowberries. Uh, not snowberries. They're rose hips. Rose hips. There yeah. you go. So rose hips are another one. You start seeing these different berries and mixed in and different cult. Uh, you'll see some brushy type stuff. You'll see different things within the grass. And where I've been most successful is in the on the edges of these points. So they're not sitting up on top, but they're close to the top. Personal experience. They're in those areas where they can find berries and they can find bugs. If you're walking through grass, I talked about this once before, that is less than approximately your mid-calf to knee, depending on how tall you are, you're going to be in a zone where they don't have enough cover. But they like to be completely covered but can peek out. Um, prairie chickens like slightly taller than that depending on the chickens themselves, but you need somewhere in that zone. But if you're walking through this grass and you don't see like, wow, I don't see any berries anywhere and I don't see any grasshoppers, then you're probably not in the right zone at that time. Now, as the season progresses, if you get any type of cold at all, they're going to be looking for grain. And this is where you start looking for the, uh, grain or sorghum or corn, depending on where exactly you're at. There's, hey, this is uh, more grain, grain, whatever grain specifically means. When you click on it, it tells you there's not as much agriculture in Montana specifically that way. A lot of it's going to be hay or alfalfa. But you start zooming in and out of these areas, um, get some information on Facebook groups of, uh, no. oh, it's or look at the reports online and find uh, north of Billings is a decent area. You've got a lot of ground to cover, but do some recon in the evenings doing exactly these things, looking for what pieces can I actually get on and what uh, what is there around them? Is there what look like waterways or is there some of your different elevations? Like this is alpha alpha here. Um, and then we have some heights here. This is a type one again. So there's a potential that this could be a piece. It's got a lower zone that works through it. And a lot of times these blue lines don't also, doesn't necessarily mean water, but start making a few points of the pieces that look better. And you're going to learn those as you continue to hunt when you combine food, water, and cover. You get to the area, try and find a place that you can put a couple dozen points, maybe six, eight, ten points on a map and go, we have some places to check in this general vicinity. You get out there, it's overgrazed this year, and it's ankle high grass. Don't drop the dogs and say, let's just check it out. Because even if there are birds still in that zone, you're not going to be able to get close enough to them. We did a little bit of that in the past. We tried, like, I know that there's generally birds in this area, and we started walking, and it's like, oh, look, there they go at 100 yards. They were in this area, but we can't hunt them. And that's going to just to be dependent on the weather, and it's the cars that were dealt. But if you get into the zone where you have a good cover and you have all of the pieces, then, yeah, put some time on the ground. There's days that we've walked a three-hour loop and not seen a bird and then the next, we shoot a couple man limit off of a, a half an hour loop. You know, it's it's you're gonna find different variety, um, different concentrations in different areas. But those are some of the big things. So keys here in the layer category, you need to be turning on all of the access ground stuff that's available 
And then you need to be going down. This is a big one that's important. The trees, crops, and cover category turn on use crop distribution. Now, if we get out of the prairie grouse zone, okay, this is one that I'm not as familiar with, but I am still going to talk like I pretend to know. And the folks that do know, please don't uh, chastise me too bad. But if we get up into the mitten here, okay, we're going to start zooming in in some areas. There's a ton of ground in this state. Now, first and foremost, I haven't added this. So we need to come down here and we need to turn on Michigan because we love Michigan, folks. We've got this on here. Now we have um, government lands, private lands, hunt management units. That's important. Uh, possible access. And then more importantly, let's go hunting access. We're going to turn off possible access there. And then close this bad boy out. And in this area, because we're in the woods, I clicked the wrong one, sorry. We need trees, crops, and cover, and we need timber cuts. That is huge. So let's find some areas in here and look at what timber cuts look like. There's a lot of crops there. Me some grounds. This is where Ethan's bad at this because I haven't done it as much. There's a Ford management group. I've got a general idea and some other stuff. Need uh, a little more. Here we go. We need to be up here. We need to be in this zone. Missing a layer, I believe, because it's not showing me everything. Dun, dun, dun. Not commercial forest. Okay, and then let's go into Young Aspen Forest. That's one that did some really cool stuff for us. So Young Aspen's a really good indication, and then pulling up individual cuts on top of that. There's, I went too far, too fast. Apologize. Hey, guys, if you are hanging out still with us and haven't I haven't fallen bored. asleep yet. <laughs> Cat's bored. I just go where Ethan tells me to go. Uh, but throw in some questions because we are going to make time for a few questions here at the very end. So want to have some here to roll through fairly quickly without hunting and pecking and searching back through because I was trying to pay attention and don't know if I saw many questions. Um, so throw them here at the bottom of the comments right now so I can hit on those here. And I can even start working on a few of them, potentially, while Ethan is still reconning. No, I'm there. So it's oh, it's one there. of the things that you look at these young Aspen zones, and there's a lot of factors to this. Again, food, and this involves time on the ground. But when you see areas that, that are cut, this is going to give you new growth, and the birds prefer new growth versus dense vegetation, dense tree cover like this, depending on exactly where you're at. This gives you direction. I mean, there's all of these pieces that show you different layers of where things are at. And depending on where you're at, talk to the people. And there are lots of people that are going to give you direction. The coffee shop in the morning is the best. And typically when we really start struggling with finding things, you can flip back to us. Um, whoa, baby. When we typically, when we start struggling, I spent a full day feeling like the, the fat kid at summer camp in the mountains of Wyoming, Southern Wyoming. Okay. Struggle bust looking for blue grouse, could not find any, didn't know what to do. Marched all over the mountains, all over the place because I'd been there before and Thought, well, I'll try the same thing. No, could not find any. We stopped down at the local whatever, start talking to people, 
and they said, oh, yeah, we're, uh, we've been finding them at 7,000 feet. Well, that's great. I spent a whole day at 9,000 feet uh, to 10,000 feet because that's where we found them last time this year. Well, uh, me being dumb didn't think we were here at a slightly different time of year or, or it's different weather conditions or whatever it may be. So you can gather information from the locals. Most of the time, people that are respectful, okay, are invited into these areas. It's it's tourist money. It is helpful to communities. I know um, in the state of South Dakota specifically, those small communities rely on hunting and people coming to the area. So they, for the most part, maybe toward the end of the season, everybody gets worn out. But for the most part, they're they're very excited to have people there that are respectful and that are are good, genuine people like everyone that listens to this uh, live chat. So hopefully this helped a little bit to show you just a handful of the different features. It's uh, It would take a master class with hours to really cover everything. And you did a podcast with uh, ben. ben on Onyx, and he did a really in-depth version, and you and have We looked some at sc- pheasants in that category too. But, but did a podcast with a lot of screen captures and stuff like that uh, they are on our YouTube channel, the podcast, Standing Stone Podcast channel. So check that out if you're interested in getting a little more of an in-depth Onyx tutorial uh, for, especially like Ethan said, directed towards pheasants. So let's take a few minutes um, because I, this is literally part of the bird dog chat to answer a few questions. So uh, there was a question up here. I think from Kaylin Kelly, how to fix a dog that is beyond gun shy with a 22 blank at 120 yards away will shut down, not playing retreat or retrieve anything. Yikes. Um, not saying that in a bad way, but that's going to be an uphill battle and you're going to have to way backtrack, go very slow and change a few things. I don't like 22 blanks for gun intros to begin with. Uh, they nah. have a different sound. They're a lot sharper. Um, so highly recommend more of a like 209 primer type of cap gun um, for your intros. Even I would even say a shotgun. If your option is a 22 blank or a shotgun, yeah. I would take the shotgun and double your distance. I mean, that's going to be a different sound than anything rifle related so and and then and this is something that you know this quick little tips and trips is not going to fix this gun shy puppy or dog it's something that's going to take time backing and forthing working through but we can help you for sure i know you're from canada it's not like oh just come down for a consult you know how about the, that? But the biggest thing that I would say about gun sensitivity as a whole is gunfire doesn't fix gun sensitivity. That's what I was going to say. So sorry. take an entire step back and do lots of fun retrieving, playing, building bird drive, building drive without any guns. Don't let them even anticipate that there's going to potentially be the possibility of a gunshot being utilized in the training session. Correct. Just have fun. Then when you've seen a change in their reaction, they're not anticipating that there's going to be gunfire. That's when you can reintroduce a shotgun uh, to a nine primer from a great distance one time. Don't get greedy. Slow and steady. You're going to make progress, but watch their reaction. Video their reaction so that if you're distracted, if you, you know, can't concentrate on exactly what happened, you can go back and watch it again and watch you know, even send us the video, but watch it yourself and be like, okay, I didn't notice that. I had a client that just sent me, um, a video of their dog's training session. And she's like, I thought he was doing so good. And then I watched the video back that I was trying to video of myself. And it, you know, it was herky jerky. You know, you're trying to video your own dog, throw a bumper, all the things, handle the dog. But she's like, I watched it back and he left or was leaving before I actually released him. And she was able to watch that video back and recognize it, whereas in the moment, it seemed like he waited until she sent him. So have a video of your of your session so you can actually watch the dog, engage their reaction, and see if there was anything that happened that you weren't aware of in the moment. 
Oh, did she? She followed up real yeah. quick. Kaylin Kelly said she followed up. You we, can chime we, in. Just we, chime in. We may guys. have an expert on that. I reached. I don't know if we have time for that. I'll reach out. Thought you guys have more experience with gun China, so I will be in contact with you guys. Okay. Uh, it's that Malinois this, that has to use a twenty-two. Oh, sorry, we're getting there. Ah. So you have to use a twenty-two. Eventually, right? Like that's the end goal, and. So need yes, more need I more mean, information, not the end goal. Uh, baby steps to get there, slow and steady. You know, we that's the we thing. can't. I no, hundred percent. I get that, but if we have a problem with a twenty-two blank, we've got to find somewhere that's halfway between or less. Like we've got to be able to work with that. And again, gun sen- uh, gunfire does not fix gun sensitivity issues. We have to build drive. And then utilize that drive to overcome any of the apprehensions or any of the issues that way. So, hundred percent would love to help. And and I know you're planning on getting a puppy from us in the future. Definitely want to be a resource for you as as much as we can. So, reach out, send me an email. We'll start setting up some um, consults, things like that, where we can help you. But twenty two is the goal, the end goal. Let's take off some smaller bites to get there. Uh, uh, so yeah, I want to answer yeah. this one from Cole, especially since you sent us that amazing sketch of Hazel. How do you get a dog to force fetch and hold if they continue to bring to you, but drop as soon as you put your hand down, um, and bites down to not let you put the dummy back in his mouth. So if your dog and, um, I watch your videos, don't have the setup or the collar, any tips. So first of all, a couple questions. Is your dog collar conditioned, if you don't have a collar, um, to fetch, hold, retrieve? So if you don't have an e-collar and you haven't collar conditioned them to those behaviors, that's where, that's the missing piece. You need to collar condition them to those behaviors of fetch, hold, so that you can reinforce them. Um, It's just like any behavior. If you don't collar condition a dog to recall, you don't collar condition a dog to sit, you don't call or condition a dog to heal. They're going to do that up to an extent, um, especially in a low distraction environment when the reward, treat, whatever that is, the bumper um, is of a high enough value and a high enough reward. When you get to the point where it's not as valuable, especially in an incredibly obedience-based training scenario of a trained retrieve, um, that isn't going to be enough where they just want to hold it. Um, So you definitely need to backtrack. And even if you don't have the table, I get putting up and completing a table is a big investment um, and big um, resource of space for one dog to go through a trained retrieve. You can modify, you can come up with other scenarios with, you know, a dog on a check cord or a leash. Um, I'm working with people through Patreon right now that we do modifications with a lot of folks based on what's available and what they have access to. Yeah, and are making really good progress with their trained retrieve process. So don't have to have all that, but the process of collar conditioning them to the behavior is key because you really can't hold them accountable until you've gotten that piece in the mix. Because, yes, they're going to come back and drop it. Well, then what do you have? You don't have any recourse other than bringing out a toe hitch um, or if you went with an ear pinch method, which is not how we train, but um, that's your recourse, some level of pressure to get the response that you have trained them to do. Um, And it's easier uh, and eventually the goal with collar conditioning them to that behavior. So you would want to cue them to fetch and to hold when they came back. But if they're not collar conditioned to that yet, we're skipping steps. So uh, we can help you. Uh, absolutely are interested in doing that. Uh, Patreon.com slash Standing Stone Kennels would be a really great place to start. Uh, you can send me a message on Instagram and I can get you started from there. Love it. I just want to say thanks to everybody for joining us this evening. It was, um, we were a couple minutes late, but we, we enjoy spending time with y'all. Um, I hope that you learned something on the little Onyx Maps demo. Wasn't, again, specific spots, but kind of talks through the things of how to find. If you do have more questions about that, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we really mean it when we say we want people to get into the sport and we want to be able to help people because we've seen 
you know, people with the desire, but none of the resources. And ultimately, folks, um, all we try and do is be a resource for people to to be able to do all the stuff. Okay, um, we love the sport, and we want to be able to share that with people. If you have more questions, let us know. As always, I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Kat, the dog trainer. We'll see you in the next one.